Hi everyone, it's Brad Ross from MakeMagicMoney.com and welcome to another DVD sneak peek from the Eric Paul Super Conference. Today, we're going to take a look at an extremely moving video. This is Eric's last live presentation. In this video, Eric reveals his deepest fears, darkest secrets, and his hopes and dreams for you. All is captured live on video in the full presentation included with your DVD set. Right now, let's go to Eric's last presentation titled The Swan Song and relive the memories and the magic, as well as the legacy that Eric Paul has left behind. Let's take a look. And this is a presentation I've never done and will probably never do again. Um, it's, that's why I called it The Swan Song. And unfortunately, maybe the last presentation I ever give. You know, we don't know, but um, but we'll see, and uh, we'll see what God has in store for me. So this is a, uh, it should be interesting. But I poured a lot into this, I am and talking um, about um, significant dates because I, it's important for me to share a lot with you. Right now, I just really want to peel back the curtain um, on on everybody and let you know uh, some things that may make you uncomfortable. Uh, will certainly not are not intended to shock you, but um, will certainly teach some valuable life lessons uh, for all of us to leave with today, I think, or at least that has been my experience. And, and I think it'll be for you as well, but I would love, what is today's date anyway, the 14th? 15th, okay, so it's November 15th, and it was one of my dreams was to make this weekend powerful enough for you and um, significant enough for you that this, today's date, becomes one of your significant dates in life. And, um, and, that's, it, and that's entirely possible if you walk into this with the, with the right mindset. Um, so that, that is my dream for you, that this whole weekend would become that significant for, for your career and your life, Not much deeper in, and, um, which will make it more significant. But let me share with you a couple significant dates. Oh, that was perfect, Dan. That sounded good. All right, this is, uh, uh, I'm going to share two significant dates of, uh, in my life <laughs> with you. And, um, and then we'll go through the lessons, and then I have a lot of tools uh, to give you. I have one last final handout uh, that I worked very hard on, and I am literally opening up the vault for you and sharing um, uh, Eric Paul unplugged, exposed, or whatever you want to call it, because this is stuff that I've really never talked to anybody about before. Um, but I think I've found it valuable, so I think I, I really I can't imagine that you wouldn't. But um, this significant date is May 22nd, 1997. It all begins. Now that doesn't seem like I'm that, I'm a little older than that, I'm 1964 is when I was born. But in 1997 was the uh, third time that I went to jail for the last time. How's that? Is there my date? <laughs> All right. That was the third time I went to prison, and, um, but this was the last time that I went to prison. And it's an extre ex extraordinarily important date for me uh, for, that, for that reason, because this is really when my new life began. Um, a little over 10 years, or, well, 12, 12 and a half years ago. And um, the way it all kind of built up is I uh, start, you know, what did I learn? What were some of the big lessons that I learned there? The big one was fun, forgive yourself of your past mistakes. All right, that was huge for me. I mean, once I had this new life now, I could do literally anything that I wanted to do because I had a completely new life. And I th thought, well, I need to forgive myself immediately of everything that, just, that I've ever done before and, and just move on. What do I really want to be? Well, I want to be a professional magician. So that was my dream ever since I was a little boy. I was going to do this seriously. And I made a conscious decision right there saying, I am going to be the greatest magician, a children's magician in my area. And you, that's where you guys heard about it. Help me. That's when I met Dave D and just serendipitous, you know, I think it was a, a, a providential thing. But I met Dave D and he taught me everything that I needed to know about marketing. And because I made that decision, forgave myself of my past mistakes, kept looking at the positive and what I wanted to do. I was able to do that within three months' time, going from three shows a month to 30 to 60 to not 70 shows a month very quickly. But within three months, I went from three to 30 and then went to 70 very quickly after that. So it's all, it's all very possible, but it came right there with that decision um, of having um, forgiven myself first and then, and then made the decision. So that's big significant date number one. Now let's go talk to about um, our next significant date, which you guys are a little... Uh, but, um, oh, and here's something else I did. I just, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my side notes here. I don't want to forget. So you forgive yourself of your past mistakes. And I also 
I have to be honest with you here, and this will serve all of us, is a technique from Alcoholics Anonymous, as a matter of fact, is you fake it till you make it, too. So not only did I give myself the title of the world's, you know, the area's top children's entertainer, but I also faked it as if I was the top entertainer way before I was the top entertainer. And then when I wrote this course on how to become your area's top children's entertainer, it was way before I was an expert in marketing or helping other magicians do it. It was way before that. So I grew into these roles um, that I had signed myself. So that's, that's pretty big too. But let's look at doing that. It was 6 a.m. and I was icing up this cooler at a convenience store, a Wawa, for those of you who enjoy that coffee. Thanks for the coffee this morning, Charles. And um, I was icing up this cooler and then all of a sudden I just got this incredible pain in my chest and I went right down on the bumper of my car and collapsed on the um, convenience, uh, on the um, driveway of the convenience store. And I uh, drove myself to the hospital, like a real bright guy that I am. Drove myself to the hospital and it turned out that I had all this fluid in my chest. And they weren't too sure what the hell it was, so they did an emergency procedure right away to get the, the pain and the pressure out because it was so painful. And, um, and they took it out and they immediately admitted me and it turned out that I had cancer, which you guys all know about. Um, and that I had what they thought was, I guess when you had seen me, Mark, uh, where well, they thought that I had had um, metastasized tumors like all over my body just by how bad it looked with the x-rays and the CAT scans. But it was all this fluid that this pr tumor had been producing over months that was making me so depressed and so just didn't want to live anymore really at, at certain points. And um, so they did all these tests and then it turned out to not be so bad. And I, I alerted you guys to a lot of this throughout. So a lot of this journey you've been on me, with me already. Um, but it turned out to be not so bad. It wasn't stage four like they originally thought, but I got released with maybe stage one or stage two, that you know we could do some chemo and everything's gonna be fine, you're gonna be just ducky. Uh, or not just ducky, it's gonna be a battle, but it's not so bad. Um, but before that, and this is an important life lesson, is I remember this nurse coming up to me, and it was about two or three in the morning, you know, you're doing all sorts of weird drugs in the hospital. I was in there for 10 days, and you never, don't really have a schedule or anything like that. So it's about 2.30 in the morning, and this real pretty nurse, we got along real well, she was a Christian girl. Uh, and I started chatting, and she goes, Eric, are you all right? And I'm like, well, you know, other than sitting in a hospital room, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really fine. And she goes, and I said, well, why are you asking? She goes, and this was when I still had stage four at this point. And she said, she goes, well, here's my, uh, my concern. She goes, I don't want to be, she goes, I want to know what you know about what you have. She goes, because I don't want to be walking around giving rounds tomorrow morning and have you overhear something that you don't really know. She goes, because you're handling this a little bit differently than anybody I've ever noticed before. She goes, so why don't you tell me what, what you have? And I told her, you know, I have stage four metastasized cancer of the lung of some sort, and um, you know, my doctor told me to make my will and to collect the people that love me around me and you know, plan to, plan to pass over in a couple months, you know? And she goes, well, why are you okay with that? You know, and I'm like, well, it's not really a matter of being okay with it. I said, but, but I am. And there's really two main reasons, and Mark touched on it this morning, is, you know, one reason is because I believe I serve an all-loving, all-powerful God, and he's not doing this to punish me, okay? That's not, that has nothing to do with what's going on here. God loves me, and there's a reason for whatever's going on, and I'm, I'm cool with it. But the second reason is that everything since the first date that I showed you, since May 27th, has been gravy, you know? It's been total gravy. It's been such a gift. Um, to be able to live a life uh, doing magic and what I love for a living, to be able to know you guys, to be able to share my experiences with people I love, you know, to have four beautiful children, you know, um, it's all been gravy. So if God wants to take me, it's cool. It's his, right? Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. So that's a pretty big lesson right there. Um, so, but like sharing that with you know that. But what I wanted to do was, um, and I guess the lesson's right here is you never know. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Um, but the really important one that I wanted to share with you before I hand out these handouts and give you some real tools that you can take with you this, this weekend is um, how my, my goals change so drastically when something like this happens to you, okay? Because I, we all, who has goals in this room? I imagine most of us. Yeah, because you guys are smart dudes, which is... Again, 1% of the population, if, if that. Uh, so congratulate, congratulate yourself for that, because that's huge. But um, I had goals, and I have you know, short term, long term, you know, and all that. But when this happened, and this is really important, I think this is 
really important, at least it has been in my life, is what happened was all my long-term goals suddenly got moved from five to 10 years, and the ones that I really, really want to accomplish got moved into a three-month period very quickly, because it's about how long I have, right? So they instantly get moved into this uh, three-month period, and um, I've got three books that are gonna be out, Hal's in one, finally. Hal's in one of them, all right? And um, you know, we've got, I got three books that are coming out, because that's, kind of, I wanna leave a mark, I wanna leave a legacy, and, um, and there's just some bigger goals that have all of a sudden changed. But then just the other day, this is like three weeks ago, and I'm sharing it with my guys, you know, Mike and uh, Jimmy, and um, I was just the other day, I was sitting at my desk, and I went, holy Christmas, because like putting on this was questionable for a while, guys, and I wasn't too sure that I was gonna be able to do it, and, um, but I really wanted to. And um, suddenly, I'm sitting at my desk like three weeks ago, and I said, oh my God, I have no long-term goals. If I make it through the holiday, the Christmas, if I make it through Christmas, I can die. Now, how screwed up is that? I had taken all my goals and all my priorities and figured it out so that I could live through Christmas to be with my kids. That's really weird to have not have any goals beyond January. So, what did I do? I immediately called up Jim Palmer, who's one of my guys, and I said, dude, we gotta do this workshop. <laughs> so I booked a workshop in January, and that's why we're doing that. Um, because I needed another goal beyond Christmas. And then I just booked um, four corporate speaking gigs, uh, two in July and two in uh, September. So, <laughs> you didn't know that. So. I love you, and I mean that. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor to be part of your lives, and I mean that. Thank you, guys. All right. I will be around for a few more hours. And then we just had a successful super conference. What are you going to do? I'm going to Disney World. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you, guys. I love you. Words are just not enough to convey the feeling, emotions, and tears that filled that room. What an impactful and powerful set of life lessons that Eric is leaving with us. What did you walk away with? What are the lessons that you will apply to your life and your legacy that you can gather from just this small sample of video from Eric's presentation? In fact, there's a whole bunch more waiting for you in the full version of Eric's presentation all caught on video. To see that full video and learn all of Eric's life lessons as well as business tools and see his final goodbye to his fellow marketers and magicians, visit www.ericpauldvdset.com right now and grab your copy today. For MakeMagicMoney.com, I'm Brad Ross, saying do what you love and love what you do.